Ladies and gentlemen, Primetime CP23 here with episode two of the Why We Play podcast. Uh, today is our special guest. We have Garrett, a.k.a. Swell. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Uh, Swell is a... I'm probably going to call you Garrett most of the time, just by the okay. way. That's fine. <laughs> um, Garrett is a streamer. Not full time. You have a full time job too, right? Uh, part time job, but I was part time school and part time streaming. So, but now that school's out of the way, I'm looking for a good job. But maybe I could try to stream more. Which, yeah, yeah. And uh, you've also just branched out from being a strictly Halo streamer to a variety streamer, right? Yeah, yeah. How's that going? It's definitely for you different. So far? Uh, um. I, like, I used to be really comfortable just hopping on Halo and streaming and just yeah, just showing my love for the game and showing what I knew and just showing off my talent. But with other games, um, yeah, they're definitely different. Sometimes I like the game I'm playing, sometimes I don't. And so it's always hit or miss, and I get different audiences, and it's weird to react with different people because, I don't know, I'm not the most outgoing of a streamer, so uh, yeah, I feel like with streaming new games, I definitely have to uh yeah, just up the entertainment factor or just see if i have fun with it and just keep going with it if i have fun that's that's the main goal is to have fun yeah i gotcha well uh first question is how do you come up with your name swell um it all started in halo reach um i wanted to change my gamer tag uh because it had too many adjectives in halo 3 it was sick x crazy awesome and it wasn't even spelled right. So, yeah, it was a little a little younger gamer tag. I wanted to branch out because I was growing older. Mm -hmm. And my I matched a lot of players with double S's in their gamer tag, like Sacrifice, uh, Siphon, and a lot of Halo players. So I thought um, I would go and look at the double S, like what words start with S in the dictionary. Because my friend would always find really original gamer tags in the dictionary, and we'd go through them all. And he ended up being unavoided, so it's like kind of original. But yeah, I wanted swell because uh, it's not used very much, and it's just I think everybody likes the word, and so that's why I went with it. There might have been um, a little subliminal stuff with uh, Chitty Bang. They have a swelly in a lot of their songs, so there's that. And the uh, double S swell, I liked the way it looked. It was gonna maybe be like Starfire or something, so I'm glad I went with swell. <laughs> I think I think it fits you better than something like Starfire would have. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the nicknames branched when I started going to tournaments. Uh, Swell Air and uh, Peanut Butter and Swelly. Um, yeah, I think Spartan may have gave that to me or just other people. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm happy it stuck. And that's why I never went back with Sick. I really liked S space I space C. I really liked the Sick gamer tag. But there was a lot of Sicks. I was called Crazy for a while. There's a lot of Crazies. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's not that many swells, and there's only a few competitive Halo players with swell, so I'm glad I could branch past them and keep going to events and keep the name. I haven't proved much, but <laughs> I'm the I'm the Halo swell. So <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, when I when I, when I hear the tag sick, I automatically think straight sick. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. This one didn't have a K, so it was kind of different. But oh, okay. I gotcha. But no, there, yeah, there's this guy named Sick with it. Um, there's a couple people with Sick. There's yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. Yeah, straight Sick. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, well, and now you've got the whole peanut butter and swelly thing. I saw yeah. you have some t-shirts for sale up now. I'm super stoked. I, I didn't want to do it right off the bat, or I never, I didn't think about it um, until I until I built the community, or until the community kind of built itself, and people just. Yeah, they just hung around for years, and they, yeah, they they like watching me play, and I just wanted to give them something and for me to wear as well when we're at events or just yeah, at home. I think it's really cool. I saw Ninja do the same thing, and I saw him like yeah retweet people wearing his stuff on Twitter, and yeah, it does feel good. It feels really good mm -hmm. to know that people from even across, across the sea and Europe buying shirts or, or Northern Ireland, and yeah, shout out to Northern Assassin. 
so I think we might have talked about this just between you and me, but uh, when did you start streaming? Um, I think it was around April of 2013. Um, it was definitely the Halo 4 era. Um, mm -hmm. It was right, It was like right when I was going to AGL 5, so I could look up the exact date. Um, it was AGL Nashville. Um, I think I think it might have been after, yeah, because I went to the event with Turtle Beaches, and they did not work on LAN. Total catastrophe. So we were just like yelling callouts. Um, we had like, um, I think we had Adventure Time, or we had like the Nerds. We lost to like New Breed. There's there's some pretty solid teams in our uh, pool play bracket, so we didn't make it out of that. Our fourth player didn't show up either, so. Okay. But yeah, I want to say it was right after that I went and I bought an Astro backpack. I bought A40s, the orange edition that I still they still work to this day. The mix amps had some issues, but yeah, so I'd say April 2013. Um, I was con I've been consistent. I want to say yeah since then. So that's coming up on four years soon. So that's yeah. I've actually got it pulled up right now. AGL five Nashville. Was uh, it summer? March 12th through 14th, 2013. Okay, so yeah, I guess I, I probably got the Astros for my birthday that year. March 19th is my birthday, so okay. yeah. So um, yeah, I, I actually got my PC about um, a year ago on my birthday. So that's when I started having OBS and things, or maybe it's been two years. I don't know, time is flying, but yeah, I definitely streamed with my laptop back then. I had 360p quality um just powered through on xbox 360 uh, h3 and halo 4 and even call of duty ghosts and just some some weird titles back then but i just had so much friends in the halo community they really pushed me through mm -hmm. and yeah and people like ninja and lethal and nated were definitely avid streamers back then and they still are besides nated but yeah yeah and a little note about that event that was so long ago pulse ambush took first formal hines formal. pistola and snipe down so you got you got ola and snipe down <laughs> still at the top now it's really mm -hmm. good for them formal zoom good and cod and yeah hines is he's doing okay yeah they were they were unstoppable back then um yeah, until I think, was, uh, I think it was four or five straight events they won and then Infamous knocked him to losers, and then Requiem, Requiem with Ninja, mm -hmm. Dursky, um, and Legit. Yeah, they knocked him. They won. And, yeah, I think that was against Status Quo. Yeah, they got fourth place that event at AGL 8. So, it was, it, yeah, it, I mean, I didn't enjoy Halo 4 as a competitive title, but I, I did more than H5. Maybe it was just the atmosphere of meeting all the pros. Like, I saw Neighbor there, Ola, Ghostiami, like, you name it. And Maven, Gandhi, casting. Um, it was definitely the most amazing first couple of events to go to. Um, I know, I know that's why people loved the MLG events because there was just a yeah, 250 teams and then all the pros, all the all the good casting, Pucket and stuff. So, um, yeah, the, I was really, I was really on fire those events to uh, to continue the stream grind, continue getting better. Um, that's what I really loved about going to events and. I gotcha. And the other team that I find of note in that seventh and eighth place, uh, even way back then, Kratos, sh Shooter, Lifestyle, and please Showtime. Please. Yep. That's a name and I do not know. Yeah, yeah, he coached him in Halo 5. Um, yeah, I think he moved in with Kratos, but yeah, oh, he, was, okay. he was a really solid player in Halo 4. Yeah. I gotcha. And then I think. Yeah, adventure. T I think yeah, Spartan got like eighth back then, and then he he got on pure and started placing fourth and third. So yeah, he really climbed. And then Suspector Boo Boo uh, Lifestyle, or, or no, I mean no no Suspector Boo Boo uh, Winter and Nemesis was a solid squad. They were getting like yeah, like fifth and eighth and stuff. So yeah. And then Reality Check was doing pretty decent back then too. But... Yeah, uh, according to this, Reality Check was 5th, 6th that event. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were consistently placing that when Halo was kind of in the dumps. Mm -hmm. So people didn't give them credit, but 
They they showed up on land for for yeah. I mean for, they stuck with it. No. They stuck with it yeah. as hard as anybody else did. And... True, true. Yeah, they they've been around since MLG days, so I give them some credit. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I know that when I first found you, I had. I was staying in a hotel room at the time. We had had something go wrong at the house, some kind of malfunction, and I came home from work at like 4 o'clock in the morning one day and just wanted to watch Halo. And that's actually how I found your channel was sometime over the summer of 2013. And, uh, I was grinding. And actually, the reason that I followed you was because somebody else had followed you while I was watching. Yeah. And I thought your follow notification was funny, so I followed you too. <laughs> was it the don't drop that thump that on yes. A? Yes. I think that's the one it was. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I loved I loved alerts and stuff. Loved the listen. So what's been the high point of your streaming career so far um definitely um the flame sword host after mm -hmm. halo 5 when they qualified for worlds i think for that 16th spot to go to regionals yeah, yeah the he hosted me with 5,000 viewers and yeah so i was yeah i was just completely shocked i was like no <coughs> way I was, I was just watching his stream and then i saw it just pop up in my stream and then <laughs> i was like no no way and yeah, yeah so i i kept like 1200 of the viewers all night and i i tried to you know, to stay calm and it's just it just it feels really good to have mm -hmm. a lot of viewers i know i i don't do it for the viewers i do it for yeah the love but yeah just to have that audience watching you play is definitely a really high point of streaming um and i yeah, i definitely want to continue to grow and get that back but um also I, I would just say when i'm i don't know just just when not when i have that many much viewers and people are just interacting with me i just it's always a high point when i'm just hanging out with people and even if i'm in a bad mood they they're there to support me so yeah yeah um i actually remembered seeing I wasn't actually watching, but I remembered seeing that Flame Sword was hosting you on Twitch, and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. That was that was pretty crazy. So yeah. right now, uh, what's your biggest goal? 5K? Um, yeah, 5K. It's 150 follows away, um, and then I'm gonna dye my hair blue, which will be interesting. And then um, I'm just gonna really grind this next eight months. Um, gonna try to play a lot of different titles um come back to halo for a little bit and play with my friends but definitely it's a year of opportunity for me um i'm definitely i'm looking for a good job as well so um so there's that and but uh, streaming's always been my dream and if i can just i want to take some risks with it i want to i want to try to branch out i want to I want to show the twitch community that i'm here and yeah, I'm super excited. Super excited. I mean, blue hair would be a way to do that. <laughs> that was something yeah. that uh, Ninja did, wasn't it? Yeah, and his brother Chris, uh, he rocked a blue hair a couple times. So. Okay. And then I think Spartan, they did it for their team colors, and if they lost, they had to dye it purple or the other team's colors yeah. for like Winter Fox and stuff. So it's it's definitely something to do on Twitch. I know. Uh, Who's that really popular YouTuber streamer? Um, like who did Minecraft? Um, his name. I forget his name. I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, I think it's like it starts with a P. A pro. What's his name? Oh, PewDiePie. Is that uh, not PewDiePie, about? but the other one, the really popular one. Um, let me type this in. Markiplier? No. Um, I only think of him because my girlfriend likes him. I think it's... Uh, yeah, I'm 
drawing a blank. Ah, well, Other... we'll come back it's... to it if you think of it. Yeah. Um. So, I know you've been playing Halo since a really long time ago. Halo Two, right? Um. Yeah. Since Halo One is when I was introduced. Um. I was at a friend's house, and the oldest brother he had it with an Xbox. He was playing through the campaign. We were just I was just watching him play. And I hadn't played many games before that on the Xbox. Maybe Fusion Frenzy. I think that was an Xbox game. Yeah, Fusion Frenzy. Um, just some party games. Mm-hmm. And I uh, I really... Yeah, I was playing soccer at the time. I think baseball, basketball. I was really into sports. Um, I didn't want to spend all my time um, playing video games. I had a friend who grinded RuneScape. And I thought, oh, that's not right to play so much in one day. And... But Look then, now. <laughs> yeah, and then my friend's brother, he started it up, who is my friend, and he uh, he started up a multiplayer game on Co- uh, Blood Gulch, Halo 1, mm-hmm. uh, Infinite Stickies, and I just I just ran to the, the highest point of the very far back rock, I just crouched behind there, and I just threw him up in the air, and I, I got a kill. It, it landed, and it killed somebody near where, like, the vehicle spawned. And I just thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And I just really, yeah, I, just, I really liked Halo from that point forward. And my friends were super excited about Halo 2 coming out. Um, they were talking about it yeah, in grade school, middle school. I think it was middle school. And I had a friend on the bus who bought the, the strategy guide. And I knew I was just going to, yeah, I wanted to play this game so bad. And I kept going over to my friend's house to play it. And, um... I, I think I became a competitive gamer when I was playing big team in Halo 2 and I wanted to run the flag home on like waterworks and not be seen. So I would just like, I would take it like each different way, back door, through the teleporter, back door, through the, this other direction. And I'd just like hide behind the box and like just watch my radar. And and then I just, yeah, I just wanted to get better in snipers. I wanted to get better in big team. I wanted to prove people that I could hang, and I uh, I was known to have a squeaky voice back then, so I, I could only say like important callouts. Um, and then I I was introduced to people who cheated, and flew around the map in flying warthog turrets, and yeah, auto awesome. auto team standbyers. And I knew I didn't want to use it to win, but sometimes you get mad online, and I don't know, you just wanted that shiny rank, and so it was it's definitely temp- temptation. And so I might have dabbled in some stuff. But uh, yeah, Halo 2 is just amazing. That's definitely where I fell in love with Halo. Um, the same with yeah, just interacting with people from across the globe, just getting to know different people. Like They were my actual best friends, like f- friends for the solid three years. It carried on to Halo 3, kept meeting new people. Went to, yeah, went to some lands, thought it was really cool in person. My skills did not transfer, transfer over. I had to... I had to learn to hold my own on LAN, which is a crazy scary experience. And I ended up getting second at a Halo 3 doubles tournament, and that's probably my proudest moment. Um, just because I loved the game on LAN, I was just firing my heart out, and my shots were hitting. And I didn't, yeah, you know, there was no abilities. It was just my shot and my random stickies that would connect sometimes. And well. So is is that your highest placing? Um, well, I mean, it was just a local tournament. Mm-hmm. There was only like I'd say like fifteen to twenty teams that showed up, um, and I ended up actually I kept going to those tournaments. I, I skipped Reach, but in Halo Four and Halo Two Anniversary, I played against the Spectre and um, Kratos and Silence and some other locals, Monk, and I would I would lose um, I would lose to them. So I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't say I was. I, I felt I was near the top of those games for locally, but yeah, definitely at the major events, I've only placed top twenty mm-hmm. out of fifty or sixty teams, which yeah, it's definitely it's a large barrier. And I felt in Halo Two Anniversary, I could have maybe broke free if I, because I really I liked that game to a point, and you really have to grind with the same team for a month before the tournament, and you actually have to see what the pro teams are doing and actually yeah you gotta you gotta make things like connect and you gotta just yeah you just gotta trust in your teammates to get important kills and just team shot 
And I never, I never had that with last minute teams, mm -hmm. but it's a struggle because you want to go to the event. You've been practicing to go to the event for months and sometimes you, you got to go with a team two weeks out, three weeks out, and then you can only get like a week of practice in. And that's just, that's all I've known for tournaments. Um, but yeah, with Halo 5, it's just not the same um, while I'm there. I, yeah, I just don't like watching it or playing it. So it's it's hard for me to want to play it at a high level and put in that sacrifice. So. Yeah. It, uh, see, I have a little different perspective on like the newer Halos because the first Halo I actually owned was Halo 4. I uh, uh, I started off, I had never really played, and then in the summer of 2012, uh, I moved to Arkansas and I found a, uh, a group of guys who would get together and have, you know, just LAN parties, yeah. and uh, and we played a lot of Halo, always Halo 3, Halo but, it was, 3. but it was right before Halo 4 came out, and, okay. uh, and so I first really got interested in right about the time Halo 4 launched. So gotcha. gotcha. So to me, since Halo 4 was my first game, I don't have the same kind of problems with things like uh yeah. things like no descope and sprint and stuff like that Infin just because I haven't been Infinite Sprint. Yeah. Infinite Sprint is a little much. <laughs> and Spartan Charge is the worst thing to ever happen to a Halo game, but we can talk about all that later. <laughs> in a different uh, video <laughs> probably um so this is this might take a little while f to get a good answer from you but uh what is your favorite map from each game all right um so with halo one to start it off i would say um probably just go with blood gulch because it was yeah the only game i played um just socially on lan because i didn't own an xbox uh, mm -hmm. at the time and so i would just take a ghost and like flip off the tank and do a bunch of flips and i'd yeah just play ctf like two it was it, we didn't have a lot of people so it was like 2v2 or just a, a three-person free-for-all it wasn't really big lands so yeah. i would say i'd go with blood gulch for Halo one um but yeah halo 2 yeah i played all the maps so much um, um my answer is waterworks um because that's that's where i fell in love with the multiplayer experience um i always i always liked i liked the atmosphere of the map it's really dark mysterious you got you got stalactites falling down you got you got a race to the middle. There's always a struggle. You don't know where people are in the middle. You don't know where people are on their bases. So it's it's really like cutthroat. Like, yeah, you kind of just run into people sometimes, and it's just wide open. And I like being on top of the map. And there are certain areas you could get to, like beneath the map. And um, so I'm gonna have to go with Waterworks. But I do respect, yeah, Midship and the competitive maps, Lockout, mm -hmm. uh, Sanctuary. Um, yeah, those those would be honorable mentions. Uh, I liked all the other big team maps as well. Relic, Terminal. Um, uh, yeah, Waterworks is not exactly the most common pick for favorite map. So, so. and then what was the other one? Um, what am I thinking of the other big team map? Uh, On Halo Zanzibar. Two. Yeah, Halo Two. Uh, it's. Um, the one with the where the golden warthog was supposed to be. I searched every top building. Sword canceled to the top of every building. Um, I am um, not sure. Went. That was before my time. My only my only real experience with Halo Two was Master Chief Collection. So you know how much Halo Two I've played. <laughs> um, let me. Uh, headlong. Yeah, I'm trying headlong. to do headlong. I got gotcha. you. But I mean, I okay. So I loved every single Halo Two map. I know this is outside the answer, but yeah, I just I loved the game engine. Mm -hmm. I loved that you could get out of the multiplayer maps. There was secret writing on like backwash. There was secret. Yeah, there was secret um, 
yeah, you could super bounce on top of maps like foundation and you could super bounce on top of burial mounds. You could super bounce like, on almost every map. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just loved everything about Halo two, uh, moving on to Halo three. Um, yeah, I was getting into high school and I still played every night and, um, I really fell in love with squad battle and ranked big team. Uh, it took a year for ranked big team to come out, but I really enjoyed. Yeah, I know like sand trap was humongous and I didn't really like a lot of the gameplay sometimes, but I would I have to say sand trap. Yeah. There were some big maps like Valhalla though. You had to control like Pelican and there's map control and you had to like push up. Mm -hmm. But when a team had control of top middle, it was really hard to, to break, to break a break map control. You had to like split push just like you do in, on like the pit and just like competitive maps yeah like onslaught or um amplified but no i'd, I'd go a standoff because of yeah ranked big team and squad battle there'd be games that were 99 99 and i'd get stuck across the map in the base and i'd get blamed for the loss <laughs> and just <laughs> like yeah you'd have to have a warthog up you'd have to control the lasers um you'd have to save a laser for their warthog and I just yeah, I liked how you could flank on the little the dishes and you could yeah get behind them and bother them by getting be yeah just I loved yeah the I love uh, standoff because yeah, there's yeah the rock there's rocket rock br rock tri rock and you just yeah, just put constant fire constant it is a standoff uh, yeah. 24 seven on that map and uh, yeah I just that would be Halo three um, so then reach came after that reach i had a love hate relationship loved the people i met on the game had some really competitive matches um online it was during my college my college time so i was playing competitive soccer and playing reach in my dorm room <laughs> yeah so i was keeping people up at night and people were mad at me but uh but yeah i was just i was just playing a lot of big team a lot of a lot of a lot of matchmaking um I would have to say Halo Reach. Uh, I want to say like I forget the name. It is on uh, one of the DLCs. There's a big team map. Um, where's the multiplayer map? All right, I should, I should know this name. Yeah, I played a lot of maps on like Boneyard and a lot of maps Paradiso. Uh, it's like Uncaged and um, used. Uh, yeah, Halo Reach's version of Coag. Oh no, yeah, the French, the French BTV players. We love BTV.com made some amazing maps um but uh yeah for, that was called way on i really liked way on i really liked trident trident had the water on the bottom and it was a big team map um yeah i can't think of the one i'm thinking but i just changed my answer yeah sword base i watched a lot of ninja and formal mm -hmm. and yeah zealot zealot was good for competitive but yeah mine is going to be kind of outside the box uh it was a it was a big team, a competitive btb.net map. Um, I think it was called Triton. Um, I think it was called Triton. Or no, it was called Fortress. Fortress, sorry, completely different. Fortress. Fortress it was a it was a symmetrical map, um, but uh, there was like there is so in the middle area you had a couple ramps and a, like a box, and then rockets would spawn there, and people would push up there, and then you could jump on top of top middle. Then there was two snipes on each side. Um, there's, there's like pillars, and it was an eight v eight. Yeah, it was an eight v eight. Like, I would like to compare it to like amplified. It was open, no vehicles. Just, um, you got eight people trying to push up from two different ways or through the middle, and there's a couple teleporters that led to in front of your base, and they kind of to the side of your base, and yeah, like you'd spawn in kind of an enclosed area and push out. And yeah, I just yeah, that, that was just such a good, good gameplay. I played against some really good competitive players, semi-pro players, from from uh, people that actually went to events like yeah, Camp and Munos, Trey Try, Hunter JJX, um, 
Yeah, there's just a lot of competitive players that joined into the lobbies. Uh, but uh, then moving on to Halo 4, um, I would I didn't think I would I didn't think there could be a game I disliked more than Reach. Halo 4 comes out. Um, if I have to pick a map, I have to pick a map. So I have to... <laughs> gotta pick, gotta pick a favorite map. Uh, yeah, so there was like what abandoned dispatch. Uh, I know they remade the pit, but you couldn't jump up on it. it their remakes did not work with sprint. Um, there was yeah, there's this exile big team map. Oh man, it's bringing back bad memories. You got <laughs> yeah, there was. I remember the goshawk being super powerful in Halo Four for big mm-hmm. team. Um, for what yeah, there was a lot of. Uh, by far, my favorite big team map on Halo 4 was definitely Exile because exactly. I got my first ever kill Trocity in the Scorpion on that uh, map. Nice. And then nice. I got my first ever Perfection, my only Perfection. Went 35-0, and 0, won, one yeah. game just camping the beam rifle the whole game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that thing was super powerful in H4 for sure. Mm-hmm. I love oh. Halo 4 beam rifle. But yeah, there wasn't. There was the longbow was the snowy big team one. I had mm. some really good matches on that. Um, but I also competed in H four. There's another snowy one that I can't think of. Do you know the one with the the mantises and there? There's always yeah. There was that uh, incineration cannon and I forget that name. Yeah, the competitive maps we had. Uh, I forget all the names of the competitive maps. Let me check. Halo 4 competitive match. I know we played on uh, like Abandon and Dispatch. Oh, there's Simplex. Simplex was good. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of Simplex, but it wasn't bad. Oh, yeah. And then there is that. Um, there's this other one that I forgot. Oh, yeah, there was Complex. Yeah, I didn't like that one. Um, yeah, if I'm going to pick a favorite... Oh, yeah, there was Haven. People liked Haven because of the railgun. and I liked how you could jump over certain things. Yeah. And then there's there was also another one that came out later in the DLCs. Um, the com- the yeah, it was a competitive one. It was at... Yeah, what was the one that... Uh, Skyline. Ace, Skyline, I think. Yeah, Ace and Ola for the million dollar. Yeah. Uh, 1v1 free free for all tournament that came down to 1v1 skyline i really liked skyline and simplex they're both symmetrical um so i'm gonna have to go with wait yeah i think weighing all the options a haven was the uh, i'll go with skyline probably all yeah right. i'll go with skyline um, Halo 2 Anniversary was next after that. Um, yeah, MCC was pretty upsetting that it didn't work very much, but H2A, we had the really good remakes of Sanctuary, um, Warlock, Warlord, and, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Lockout, Lockdown. Um, and then, yeah, they remade, like, Relic and, uh, Coag and Blood Gulch with I don't yeah Coag but those weren't very good remakes in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there was Ascension, Ascension and Last Resort. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, Reach had a pretty good. Um, they remade the Halo One maps and Ivory Tower. Those are pretty good. Yeah, Boardwalk was good too. I forgot that. But uh, Halo Two Anniversary, I'd go with. Sanctuary or lockout. Um, I lock lockdown lockout. I liked. Uh, besides the following, stalactites had good matches. Good. Yeah, you had to like if you were spawning blue, you had to push out like elbow and bottom middle. It was still classic gameplay. Um, I liked the ball game type on there. Slayer. Um, there wasn't any like one flag variants from Halo Two and Halo Two Anniversary. I didn't like that. We go with lockdown halo f- so yeah halo 5 is next uh um so yeah i i, I always say that none of them are my favorite because it's halo 5 i have to pick a map 
I'd say uh, Coliseum. Yeah, Coliseum's pretty symmetrical. Good. Yeah, good flag map. Um, there's I like yeah I just like how there's little little like nooks and crannies that you can uh, maneuver around. The game yeah does rely on a lot of like clambering and different stuff, and you can jump around the backside of it. And you got yeah you, it's just like basic old pit gameplay. You get into their closet, you spawn kill, and you run the flag. So that's why I like Coliseum the best. So. Yeah, Coliseum is probably my favorite map on Halo Five. I like Plaza. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, I like Plaza probably as a honorable mention. I mean, Halo Five. The question is really, which is your least favorite map? Like that's <laughs> that that's a much harder question than what's your favorite. Yeah, um, I think one of my least favorite maps is in Halo Four. It was a competitive map, but people would just yeah, you couldn't descope the snipers, and they just stat from like they had crazy mm -hmm. angles. But I forget that map. It got taken out of competitive play. So it was. But yeah, if we were gonna do Leafs favorite maps, yeah, there's like, yeah, there's like Backwash, there's uh, there's Epitaph in Halo Three. People didn't like Snowbound very much. Some people did, but yeah. Halo Reach, uh, Sword Base was kind of iffy. Yeah, Sword Base it depended it depended on, you know, if the other team if the teams were camping in that oh, lift yeah. room yeah. or if they were actually playing. Yeah, yeah, and then also SWAT on the map was actually pretty intense because yeah, you yeah. you don't know what floor they were on. So yeah, I gotcha. But if I were to pick a least favorite H five map, uh, I don't know, probably probably the Haven remake because I just dislike H four, so I really? disliked seeing it. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> See, I thought that was and I'm, better Halo five maps. I'm, I'm just a hater, so. <laughs> I would say every single map. Such a hater. Um, well, so here's the topic everyone's been waiting for. How do we fix Halo 6? What do we have Halo to six. change in Halo 6? Ooh, and it comes down to me? Okay. Yes. Um, Pretend that you six. are Ghost Ayami. What do you change about Halo 6? All right, so we scrap H4, we scrap H5, and we scrap Reach. Completely scrap them. Um, you, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, you like, yeah, you like apologize to the community, even the community that you built from these games that people liked Reach H4 and H5. Just tell them you're going a more traditional route. Um, um, yeah, you're, you're just. Uh, just say Halo Six. Um, I don't know. Teleport it in the past. I don't know. Just. Let's just go back to the traditional gameplay, the core formula of Halo One through Three. Um, so yeah, starting weapons, not not weapons that are super powerful, like either the pistol or the BR, and then the weapons on the map. Yeah, you, you'll still have a sniper that, that should be hard to use. You should have yeah power weapons that are somewhat hard to use, rockets that'll get you good kills, but there shouldn't be too much overpowering stuff in competitive play. And even casual play, that's what people loved. They loved classic gameplay. They loved Halo 1. There were so many tricks you had to learn. Halo 2, there were so many tricks you had to learn. So much to know about each map. So much skill gap. Like, that's what that's what people love. But Halo 5 has a skill gap with all the new stuff. But it's not traditional Halo. And Halo 6 should just abandon all the abilities, abandon everything. Um, yeah, well, you can... And I mean, briefly touching on the you know yeah. weapons and stuff i can't tell you one person who comes out every day and says you know i really like the plasma caster that's a really good weapon yeah, yeah. like no they the sandbox for halo 5 the weapons are super powerful like they're mm -hmm. they're not the worst guns but they're, it's not traditional gameplay halo gameplay that i fell in love with and that millions of people that left the franchise fell in love with yeah like they they fell in love with having to move around the map and they had to yeah fend for themselves with their br and with their yeah i mean if they i'm not saying like you can't use other weapons to get kills like a like a brute shot you'd have to bank it off the ground and stuff kind of like a plasma caster but it just wasn't as frequent 
mm-hmm. as the weapons in Halo Five, like as many power weapon kills every game. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, whoever gets the power weapon kills usually wins the game in a Halo match, which is how it's yeah it's been set in stone like that for ages. So I mean, there shouldn't be as many with Halo Five. I feel like everything's a power weapon that you pick up. Having like a DMR and a a light rifle that can sh- do more damage long range is it's a very interesting aspect to the sandbox, but I, I remember in Halo 3, I was shooting my BR across sand, sand, uh, sandbox, sand trap, oh, and sandbox. That was a good map too. And I had to lead my shots, and I, I, I liked that challenge. I liked putting shots in everyone, and I liked how difficult it was. Um, yeah. So if they could just make, like, I understand hit scan has been in for a while. Um, with yeah, and people have been having sensitivity crisis with H5, but. I know H4 had hit scan, uh, H2A had hit scan, and they were just, it's just really easy to land shots. You don't have to strafe very much. In Halo 5, there's a lot of, there's a lot of movement, and that's what people like is trying to juke mm-hmm. people and thrusting at the last second. But that's, yeah, that's pretty untraditional. Like you see that in Reach a little bit with strafing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I just, yeah, I just want, even with, yeah, Reach, no bloom, no sprint, people liked that. And if we could just go back to the traditional stuff, um i could i could try to dive into it but yeah, just the maps people would like the maps more without abilities they'd they'd like how the game is slowed down again um i feel like even if we if you want to take from games like doom and unreal tournament and other games where they pick up like like i know pickups on the map for going faster and stuff like that i'm not really big into that but or those are how old arena shooters work, but yeah, Halo is how Halo used to be, and Halo One through Three. I know they're very different from each other, Halo One to Halo Two to Halo Three. But if there can just be a mixture of those um, with futuristic and good-looking guns, um, but yeah, keeping the same Halo um, sandbox of guns um, that were in the earlier series, and maybe adding in button glitches or adding in super bounces or adding in um, stuff that wasn't supposed to be there in the first place, but maybe that'll create that spark. Um, I know, like, I feel like people miss Bungie's, like, coding. That's what I do. I miss the coding of Halo 1, the coding of Halo 2, and the coding of Halo 3. Uh, just how the games felt. Um, so, yeah, if we if they could somehow reimagine that. I know I know people at 343, they, they, they love Halo, so I know they could make it. They could make a classic game if they tried, and I feel like we we should have been boycotting the abilities even though we we did that in reach we did that in h4 and i know people don't want to change h5 too much but halo 6 it's it's the only hope halo has um honestly people will buy halo 6 if it has a bunch of um mechanics and um different different little things that 343 think is a good idea their ideas have not been good in the past and just from a population standpoint to the traditional franchise people who loved it i mean the traditional people we are getting older and i know they're trying to pinpoint younger people in the marketplace or young younger people in the the gaming world but i don't know we're still out here we just it's one more tra- a traditional halo game and i know i know they can do it i know they can do it well, I th- I think I've given this idea in your stream before, so you may have heard me say some of this before. Yeah. But uh, I think what we need to do, we being 343 and the uh, Halo community as a whole, yeah. I think we all need to attempt to forget Master Chief Collection for what it was, on what november 11th 2014 whenever it released and didn't work at all you couldn't even get into a game and i think that give us like h3a or something h3a i think that over the next what seven months eight months something like that until september uh 343 needs to dedicate a lot of time and a lot of resources to fixing Master Chief Collection. Even if Master Chief Collection only runs as well as Halo 5, which of course Halo 5 has some issues, both with the servers and with 
you know, everything else. But even if they can give us Master Chief Collection working as well as Halo 5 does. With some updates, yeah. With some updates. They, and they maybe then, add in, like, an EXP system or add in, uh, yeah, just different playlists for Hardcore for Halo 2 and Halo 3. They have ranked... Oh, no, I don't think Snipers is ranked in that. But, yeah, they... I mean, they, they wanted people to move on is why they didn't mm. give... Yeah, they got rid of Hardcore in that game and stuff. So, so see... What I'm thinking is spend the next seven months fixing Master Chief Collection and actually getting it working. And then say... We're giving even Even just a month before. Just say, oh, by the way, Halo 3 Anniversary is going to be a $15 DLC add-on to the Master Chief Collection. Make it 25 30 bucks, whatever. And have that be the competitive game for the next from september of this year until whenever halo 6 6 comes out yeah have that be the actual competitive title that they run in the hcs and all that yeah because and then in halo 6 just i think do what 343 thinks is best expand on what halo 5 did because at that point you have Master Chief Collection with H2A and H3A. Yeah. Cuz for the past 5 years and 6 years people have been uh, the people who love traditional Halo have been abandoning it because we feel mm-hmm. we feel yeah completely neglected and yeah we feel like yeah they're going with their Halo 5 they're going with their ideas which they're they're I mean it's it's their company they they get the final say so and they don't have to listen to the pros to change settings, so they, yeah, they can they can do Halo Six how they want. But yeah, we just want H three A. We want yeah a few updates on MCC if possible. And but yeah, I, I think I think that would if they actually make MCC work, and if they give us a good Halo Three anniversary, and I mean ideally give us Halo Three anniversary competitive for a year, eight months, however long they want to do it, a season or two. Yeah, if they could keep, like, a traditional, like, engine, I know Halo 3 was made a long time ago, but they keep making it with, like, a Halo 5 or Halo 4 engine, so it plays differently. So, mm-hmm. yeah, H3A, I know H3A might be outsourced again, just like MCC, so. Let's hope not. But um, as long as it's got the traditional uh, gameplay or the traditional, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, it's because uh, I think that would really please old fans. It would give them one more chance to monetize yep. MCC before they basically pack it in a little box and say, okay, we're done with that. And it would really stimulate the, in my opinion, it would really stimulate both the competitive crowd and the, you know, 30 year olds who were playing halo 3 10 years ago with their buddies yeah. in a basement you know yeah. it would it, i think it would please a lot of people it would give them another chance to monetize mcc and maybe uh, maybe even sell some new copies of it and yeah. i think that, that would be a good way for them to monetize a little bit to help them have a little extra development time on halo 6 so that you know they can make sure and give us a solid product with halo 6 and i mean i don't dislike halo 5 i'm not good at it it's very different um it's all very fast the the time to kill is ridiculously fast there's way too many weapons the wreck system is kind of a mess i don't i, I kind of like the cosmetics from the rec system but i mean halo 5 is not a bad game it's just not what halo fans wanted yeah. and so you know that this would be a way to give halo fans what they really want which is a halo 3 anniversary and a working master chief collection for them to play four or five years in the future So I, and then then we turn heads like Modern Warfare is for Call of Duty, 
people are like, why are so many people playing that game? Like, exact. What what is the deal with that? And then we can tell them, like, guess, like we used to play this. <laughs> Yeah, it would basically be the exact same thing as Modern Warfare Remastered because uh, people would be like, well, why does this have higher population than the actual game we put out? Because the remake is better than the game you put out this year. Yeah. But I believe That's... that'll bring us to our last topic. And that is, quite simply, what does Halo mean to you? That's a good question. Uh, to that you question as a person, really to you as a gamer. Um, so yeah, Halo was my first love. Um, it was a home away from home. It was a different reality. Um, it was just really something I, I dove into. Um, I was just on a virtual world that I enjoyed just being there with friends and enemies, and I. Uh, I learned a lot of things from it. Um, yeah, I learned yeah, I learned how, how to have fun on a consistent basis. Uh, addiction, <laughs> hard addiction to video games in Halo. Um, I learned uh, teamwork, problem solving. Um, it was just something, it was just a work of art. Like I could express myself. Um, I could express myself in different different game modes, different, I could be really, really competitive one minute and I could just goof around the next. Um, I could, yeah, I could just express my feelings in real life and just take them, take them out on people. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd always try to be respectful. It's still, yeah, I, I still never wanted, I, I learned not to, yeah, like lose who you are in real life to a yeah, virtual online internet mode. So yeah, I, I knew, yeah, arguments went, got you nowhere. Um, fighting with people got you nowhere cutting down on people is still frowned upon and i just i liked how i i kind of worked myself up some ranks and cut myself away from some players and just had a really strong group of uh players slash friends and i i had fun trying to get better um halo just it just i was so comfortable with it the past 12 years 11 years um uh, it's it's something I uh, years of my life have gone into. Um, my alias online has meant so much. Um, I've just met so many people. I, I've always I've always wanted to be respected. That's a big it's a big goal for everyone I think in life. I've been I've gotten a lot of respect out of the community, and that's why I I stick around with it. And I don't I don't want to completely leave the community, which. Halo 5 has, in my eyes, given me a big reason not to, and Halo 4, and MCC, but I want, I want to show my love, and I want to keep, I want, I want to keep with it, it's, it's grown with me, um, into my adult years, and I still see, I still see it in my path, um, for the next year to come, and maybe into Halo 6, but I, I'm trying to branch out in Twitch, and that kind of overlaps my love for Halo, and it's it's a new dream, and I I just I just thank I'm thankful to be a part of the people I met in the Halo community, and I know I know life happens, I know people grow apart, and it's sad, and we can always just look back on Halo memories, and new titles, Halo old old Halo titles, each title brought different memories and. I'm just, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss how it was. Um, hopefully H3A happens. Uh, and hopefully H6 isn't too much for me to handle like H5. I gotcha. Well, uh, I think surprise last question that I just thought of. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've seen anything about it. Nintendo Switch, you getting one? Um, I have not seen a lot about it, but um, I know a lot of people love Zelda. I want to give that game a chance. Um, wanna, I want to give Pokemon a chance. Uh, I want to give Smash Bros a chance. I don't know if there's going to be a new, a new game on the Switch or not. But yeah, I definitely. I'm sure there will be before too long. Yeah, yeah. So whatever that game is, I'm definitely going to give Smash a try. I want to try to stream on 
yeah, I think that's another console I could get into. Mm -hmm. I want to, because I, I know a lot of streamers have gone the PC route, but yeah, I'm a console player. I love I love playing Smash Bros on LAN. I love playing Halo on LAN. Um, I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm used to watching people play Goldeneye growing up, like yeah, Tetris, freaking yeah, Nintendo, like GameCube, you name it. So yeah, I wanna I wanna try uh, Nintendo games. I wanna try. Yeah, I've streamed some Smash. I want to just keep keep branching. So, yeah. Well, uh, I I think I'll probably get one. Maybe not right at launch, but when do they come out? Uh, March third is the launch date. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right I around can... the corner. Yeah. So um, I have a lot of games to play this year. <laughs> Halo has definitely taken up the past yeah, eleven years of my gaming career. So. I uh, got a lot of games to play, so I'll try. A lot of catching up to do. <laughs> yep. yeah, Zelda could be a fun one to stream. <laughs> well, uh, I think yeah. that's going to Mario do Party it. and Mario Kart and uh, all, Nintendo. All the Mario titles. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the interview, uh, Primetime. Well, Chris. Uh, thank you for being the first actual guest on here. Uh, Hope to do it again sometime. Uh, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, to the Swell fam, to uh, to uh, yeah, all my friends, to my family, um, to uh, Lucky Seven, I guess, and Acquire. Um, thank you guys for letting me represent you. And no shout outs to any 343 employees or their terrible game making. <laughs> all righty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude the second episode of the Why We Play podcast. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure to share this video with all your friends. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Primetime CP23, and this Deuces. is Why We Play. <laughs>